ABC Thursdays. Welcome back. Grey's Anatomy is all new. Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? The drama going down. Bungee jumper from the bridge is cord snap. We need all hands on deck. Is unbelievable. You think you're God's gift to this hospital? You're just another doctor. My relationship with Catherine is complicated. I'm going to sue you. Your lawyers know where to find me. You're unbelievable. Grey's Anatomy. All new Thursdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves, you can't do it, I'm going to help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV Plus. Admit it. It's cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves, streaming September 27th on Apple TV Plus. Rated R. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame South African Marionette and Carter, or Sam for short. Can I just call you Sam? You can call me Sesame Sam and Carter. Sesame Sam. Sesame Sam and Carter. Sesame Sam, Sesame Sam, Sesame Sam and Carter. You could turn that into like a theme song to the show or whatever. Yeah, we'll have a spin-off show. show. It's just going to be called Sesame Sam and Carta. Yeah, that's it. That's all it is. <laughs> the whole just show is just to you, you talking. Or trying to figure out how to do the podcast equipment. That's the whole episode. Yes. He's <laughs> sending into madness and anger as I can't figure it out. <laughs> trying to do it from a different city when I have all the equipment yeah. here. <laughs> right. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, wow. so anyways, folks, welcome to the latest episode here. Um, Just... uh. Yeah, just uh, up front, wanted to say thanks for all the support you've given us over the years. Um, but I hate to break it to you that I think we're going to be replaced hmm. by puppets. Specifically marionettes. Yes, some weird marionettes. They may sound like us, I don't know. But, you know, with AI going the way it is, maybe they can, you know, just duplicate my voice. And I'll, I yeah. won't have to do the podcast anymore. You know, <clears throat> if they were to do that, they would probably probably be so accurate because of like hours upon hours of us talking like if ai were to like yeah you know what i mean like they had so much material to go i mean god how many we have close yeah. to like what 100 episodes uploaded at this yeah. point each one 45 minutes to maybe an hour a yeah, piece. It's, it's, so... it's a lot of it's a lot of uh stuff to learn off of i mean i i remember uh this was like a year or two ago um somebody had ai do um like an episode of joe rogan's podcast <laughs> Because of all the hours of his voice that's out there, <laughs> it yeah. was able to kind of duplicate it, but you could still tell it was kind of fake. But, you know, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, of course. There is an element where it's, uh, yeah, tell it. You know, it's maybe a good better. Maybe, maybe it won't. Maybe it's kind of reached its heights, you know, type of thing. But, you know, who knows? Did yeah. you see that thing I posted about Donald Trump going on a, like a shamanic yeah. journey? That, like, that was so creepy looking. Like, yeah, eight. AI is creepy, but it still does have like kind of a similar effect to this marionette stuff that's going on in this uh, show that we're covering today. We're yeah. covering the pilot episode of a show called Interstar. Yeah, not Interstar. Interstar. No, Interstar. Um, yeah, it's a foreign television show from 1980. Uh, one, I believe. Was, What's that? Well, it was made. It was made in 1981, but I think it was aired in 1982. Okay, yeah, because it's uh, yeah, it was a two-season science fiction puppet television series made for children, oh. which is kind of scary because this isn't really. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, it was shown in South Africa in the early 80s. At the time of its production, the show was uh, variously, uh, variously compared to the Thunderbirds, um, which was a British uh, show from the 60s that used similar similar things and it was uh previously broadcast in south africa um and it was called uh international rescue instead of thunderbirds mm. and it was uh a reading international um because it was in afrikaans and they dubbed it over so i guess they decided that they wanted to make their own version of that mm -hmm. and yeah they sure did yes, yes they sure did <clears throat> 
Some of the times I couldn't tell what language they were speaking because sometimes it sounded like French or Dutch even. I'm like, what well, language are they actually speaking? Like, Well, like Afrikaan, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a mixture of different languages. Okay. Yeah, because it probably has Dutch and French and uh, English in it. Um, okay. Yeah, Afrikaans is a West Germanic language spoken in South Africa, Nambia, um, Botswana, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. It evolved from the Dutch vernacular of South Holland and spoken by the predominantly Dutch settlers and enslaved population of the Dutch Cape Colony, where it gradually began to develop um, over the years. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it basically, it started like in the developed over the, like the uh, like the 18th century on to the present day. So. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it was when, you know, they started to, you know, when the, 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 the greatest thing that humanity ever created, which was colonialism. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. We're just going to, we're not going to speak your language, by the way. We're just going to impose our <laughs> language and then make it like turn into like its own language, I guess, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Colonialism. Oh, cool. Not really. Do you hear? <laughs> well, according, according to some people, like the Israeli settler that they interview, she's like, "Oh, colonialism gets a bad rap. It's actually really cool." So you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, yep. yeah. But I mean, <laughs> much like uh, much like the movie Gili, it gets a bad rap. Wait, <laughs> Gili. Wow, that's that's like a deep cut yeah. reference right yeah. there. <laughs> Benifer, one well, Benifer is no longer Benifer again. Yeah. So that was the yep. movie where they got together the first time, and then they broke him apart because yeah. And now, uh, now, now, uh, um, Affleck is supposedly dating um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s daughter. Oh my God, she's she 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 she's girl. like I guess she's she's come saying like some stuff about her dad that's really weird lately. Like he cut the head off of a whale. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I heard about that. Jesus, that guy is weird, man. Mm -hmm. And he's um, weird enough to be show, you know. Yeah, she. Yeah, but her name is Kick. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember Kick now the story. Kennedy. Yeah, Kick. Kick I know that the dude. This uh, man. I could talk hours about this guy. But, but, yeah. Um, Maybe in the future so we'll weird. do an episode about RFK Jr. But in the meantime, yeah, yeah. if you want to find out a lot about him, there's a four-part series of Behind the Bastards about him oh with my Robert, God. Robert Evans' show and with uh, with uh, Cody Johnston as the guest uh, on there. So yeah, it's a pretty good listen. Um. I think I'll listen to that tonight while I play Wii Sports Bowl. <laughs> yeah, there's just four like, episodes. Of it. it came out a month or two ago from when we're recording. So by the time this comes out, it would be a couple months ago. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, back to the show Interstellar. Yeah. Uh, the main uh, plot involved an undercover planetary defense agency operating from Cape Town under the guise of an interstellar shipping company. The show, uh, yeah. the show mirrored real world po political issues of international isolation facing apartheid uh, South Africa, with the Earth being depicted as the galactic pariah of the Interplanetary League due to its uh, Cold War with the planet Krakon. <laughs> the villain in the series was depicted by Prince um, Karnati or his evil henchmen yeah so uh yeah the the spaceships used in the show were called impalas um after the south african air force aircraft the the locally assembled italian um whatever um era machi mb326 there was a pragmatic reason for calling the aircraft impalas the basis of the models were one-fourth scale plastic model kits of the am3 26s hmm. yeah so yeah so it, it, it was it was basically a show made for kids <laughs> that was veiled a, a veiled political show about apartheid <laughs> wait so was it anti-apartheid or pro-apartheid i don't know because <laughs> if it was anti-apartheid that would mean that like they're going against like the government like yeah that's what i'm trying to figure like, out i don't know what i would say from, from the one episode we watched i don't know if this was pro or anti-apartheid or maybe it was just like about it like not even really having like a position or something i don't know like yeah oh boy um i'm gonna go with anti because i think only like a really weird left-wing person would come up with this show. i don't think a right wing <laughs> would come up with that maybe. who knows maybe because they're the weird one so yeah like, because you know, the, the second best thing that humanity ever created after colonialism was apartheid <laughs> yes exactly and then um marry that yeah apartheid is like the uh you know for for like you know Gili is the uh, is is the colonialism of movies, whereas 
Whereas something like Plan Nine from Outer Space is the apartheid. I don't know. Yes, yeah, we we that's a good yeah good metaphor. Yeah. Oh. And, but then, <laughs> then there's also the 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 genocide of films is uh, Tooth Fairy too. But um anyway yeah. so <laughs> yeah oh boy so um anyways what goes down in this pilot episode here for the show. Okay, well, uh, just for like a oh, starter. Oh, oh. By, by the way, oh. I do recommend people watch this before listening to the rest of this episode. And a oh, fair right, warning, yes. fair warning, it's uh, it's subtitled. So there is no English dub that we could find. No, because I don't think they made one. And I think the person made this themselves. Like, so I would, don't even know if this was like an official subtitle. I think the users yeah. did it on their own. I don't know. So <clears throat> just for, as a quick thought, though. Yeah, this was supposed to be made for children, right? Mm-hmm. I was watching this last night. I'm like, there's no way this is a kid's show. Like, it's just so weird. So, like, my niece is over here. <clears throat> and she's like, yeah, I saw the thing. I, I was going to watch it, but I wanted to wait to watch it with you because it looked like it was going on, like, halfway through and stuff. And um, yeah. But I wanted to watch it with you, but I also want to watch it alone, too. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess. And then I start <laughs> watching and she's like, she's like three minutes in, and she's like, I got this is too weird for me. I gotta go. <laughs> How old like, is your niece again? Uh, uh, eight. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I, I, I could see an eight-year-old wanting to check out of this pretty soon into it. It's like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, so basically, there's this, like, you know, Top Gun type type of pilot named Bucks or something like Buck De La Ray or something like, or Book De La Ray, I guess, or something like that. Yeah. And uh, he's kind of like the, you know, the hot shot pilot or whatever and he's got a his co-pilot is um named adam and they uh <clears throat> they're flying back home to, to earth and one of the ships from like the enemy planet is kind of following them like you know intimidate whatever and like buck is like yeah don't worry about it they're just you know they're not really gonna start a war they're just kind of intimidate us it'll be fine and so they see the, like this huge asteroid in front of them and they're like oh <clears throat> that's so weird that we have just like a random asteroid out of nowhere that's not suspicious whatsoever and then they just fly past the, the bad guys are like cool just like let them pass through and let them go home it'll be fine and so then they <clears throat> the, the asteroid turns out to be like its own spaceship and so then fly into the doors the doors take about 10 low and uh, that scene was way too long and it, then <laughs> this puppet start walking this this uh i forgot his name but he's like i guess call him a military leader of work or yeah yeah i was That's trying to find like a, a list of character names and i can't um really find that anywhere <laughs> It's okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. And uh and but, so like this weird looking dude who who you have now as your um profile pick on Dream Yard yeah. thing. <laughs> He's like just really successful. It's basically kind of like ripping off Star Wars a little bit, like like, oh, this intergalactic businessman, you know, it's got his Yeah, I mean it it, it kind of has business. a has a Star Wars or Dune kind of feel. I mean, obviously Star Wars ripped off Dune anyways, so it's kinda got that sort of feel to it. You know, like, yeah, and so like he's basically like proposes to the guy, not not like as a marriage, like he's not going to marry him, but like he proposes. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I watched something completely different than you. Then, yeah, like <laughs> uh, those, those are deleted scenes I found on YouTube. No, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so he's like, hey, I got a proposition for you. How about um I free your print and have him go back to your planet, and you give me a uh, half hung ton of what was it, chrome something or chromite or th- I, chromite. Was. Some I think it was chromite yeah, something like that you know like he's like your planet has a lot of it so it's like not a big deal if you give us like half a ton or whatever then um you know we'll get your guy to escape and then you can do whatever you want type of thing so this guy's basically like a traitor planet earth because only cares about so and then he, they, that he other said, guy, the guy also wants him to kill bucks yeah bucks has to go so um you know the bucks the buck stops Stop right here. Buck. yeah <laughs> The buck stops right buck. So, um, <clears throat> he's, he's got his henchmen to, uh, pretend to be the International Red Cross, I guess, for some, I don't know, and then, uh, to do a medical checkup of Prince. What's his name? Carnita? I forget his name. Carnica or Kirika or, uh, um, what's the guy's name? The, the, the Prince or uh, the Crown Prince. His name is yeah. Carnati. Sorry, Carnati. So, he's the Car- Crown Carnati's Prince. Like... He's a, he's a proud, Crown Prince of the Krakons. Yeah. And they've had him captured for a while to basically avoid, like, an all-out war of planets. And, and so, he's like, I, I don't care about you, I don't need a medical checkup, and the guy kind of points his finger to his mouth, like, Shh, shushing him, and so, like, then he just, like, takes him out, like, nobody's suspicious whatsoever, and 
Kind of reminds me of the really slow robot in uh, the most the movie where the kid like eight years old, even though he got abducted by like Journey. Oh, uh, oh, um, uh, Flight of the Navigator. Yeah, yeah, so like there's a scene in there where it's like a really, really slow ro- food robot, and he just yeah. hides inside by it. it. Just goes like takes like ten minutes just to get out of the. And this was kind of like that. It was just like super slow. Finally, they got him into the cargo space of the the ship that. Buck and I'm like, kind of, kind of got him like boom type whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets out. Buck's, <clears throat> I think, figures out the prince shows up and he's like, aha, whatever. And he's like, you got to go and blah, blah, blah and take me to whatever. Then he's like, oh, okay. And he's like, decrete or I'm going to shoot you. And then like, he's going to kill him anyway. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to kill you anyway. So then the dude like does like eject seat and the prince just like falls on the ground like, uh Get him! So then, like, he gets, like, in this really huge landing ship that has, like, a satellite for no apparent reason. I've always no- noticed that in, like, old movies and shows where it's like, why do they have a satellite that seemingly does nothing? Like, just to make it seem <laughs> like it's, like, a cool ship or whatever. Like, what does the satellite do exactly? Because it's, like, spinning around. <clears throat> and, um... So... It, you know, the, the satellite it, it spins around and then it's able to like pick up HBO. Maybe that's what it was. They're like, we yeah. gotta watch their cool shows while we're <laughs> here. And of course, conveniently, they're like, oh, this planet's not much bigger than Earth, and it's got good oxygen levels, so you could breathe in it. Like, oh wow, that's good. Like, so they don't need like a mask or anything like that. Because that yeah. probably would have been hard for the marionette. So they had to like find a way. Oh yeah, um, you could totally breathe on this planet guy which i'm surprised because it looked like the planet mars like with all this dirt mm-hmm. and shit so i'm like all right i don't think about that but but, but then again uh, they, on earth look like mars too i mean yeah i guess and uh anyway so what happens after this when they get it back to the um they're uh they're basically having this little showdown and the uh the bad guys are shooting at the good guys and <laughs> missing and then at one point they they blow up the ship or something and they think uh the guys are dead, but they're really not, and they escape. Bucks and Adam. Bucks and Adam. I like that. That's a good show right there. Bucks and Adam. That's like a crime, like cop show, buddy cop show. We should take all these episodes and redub them with new dialogue. That would and... actually be like a mystery science. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, or, or like yeah, and call it Bucks and Adam. I mean, the the other thing that this reminds me of, and it's because it was inspired by, uh, as well by um, Thunderbird, the Thunderbirds. Um, is Team America World Police. Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that the whole time. Yeah, because it's a similar thing. It's the, uh, um, I think it's called marionation, something. Uh, su- super super marionation is the uh, technique of using uh, marionette puppets with their, that their mouths can move and all that shit, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So, what's going on here? We got, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, that's okay. Yeah, we've got uh, got the bad guys, you know, fighting them, and they they end up escaping on their little, their little uh, escape bikes. <laughs> yeah, those things. Yeah, they're that's the technical term for them. Um, yeah, the escape bikes, yes, yes. or hovercrafts or whatever they're called. Yes, hey, you know everybody has an escape bike, right? Uh, well, sure, but you gotta have. Yes, I have one. Everybody you know, needs a it, go dog and an escape bike. Yeah, I, ha- I have one underneath my pillow in my bed, and um, yeah. it makes it hard to sleep at night. But <laughs> but I got to be ready in case the the uh, crocons come for me or whatever. Um, the cro the cro. I, they, I think that's, they said crow codes, not crow cons. Crow okay. code. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> our, our, our redubbed version, they're going to be called croutons. And um, Crout- yeah, there you go. <laughs> croutons. Yeah, the crouton that's, planet. He, here's something, folks. That... If, if if you enjoy this 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 little thing, this little episode thing, I seriously will re-record new dialogue and we'll write a whole new episode based on this pilot yeah we'll that change would be the pretty... story or whatever we need to if you go to our patreon and you join right. in one of the higher tiers you can let us know that and we'll do it and release it just for you yeah totally and if you hear it's not copyrighted at all yeah there's somebody yelling outside my door so uh, it's kind of interesting right outside my apartment so it's fun <laughs> if you can hear that folks uh, i don't know if you can you take a you could wait until they're done or whatever I don't care. oh no i'm good i'm good i don't care because <laughs> they might be being chased by the crocons the, croco. or, the, yeah. the croutons <laughs> um the crouton. you know, yes it might be some you know some uh italian dressing being chased by the croutons right i'm loopy uh, that's so, so um, weird yeah. So so what happens here? We got uh they, they escape and then they uh they end up getting back to their ship and then they get back to Earth. That's pretty much the whole show. The yes. episode, I mean. The, well they do have like a professor that's kind of like their leader, but they don't yeah, really they explain. get back to him and th- then this yeah. 
and this woman there named Lita. So that's like the team, basically. But like, we don't really know like exactly like what this team is or like what they what their purpose is. Like, I don't really remember. Yeah, are they working for the government or is it just like a private type of? From from what the description of the show is, it was saying that they uh, they're an undercover planetary defense agency operating from Cape Town under the guise of an interstellar shipping company. Okay, but why would they need to? Why would they need to like conceal their? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't I just don't understand like if you're in a cold war <clears throat> within with with another planet and everybody knows that why would you then need to disguise what mm-hmm. you're think like why would the humans like oh no I don't want these people to protect my planet so they have to like pretend they're a shit company yeah I don't get it or or maybe they they hide as a shipping company so then the other planets don't know who they are but obviously oh, okay. obviously oh, the sorry. croutons do and um <laughs> well yeah the croutons, yeah the croutons the croutons know that they're are the metaphorical uh, Italian dressing. Yeah. So yes, they're, they're they, they 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 go around in their salad spinner and they uh <laughs> <laughs> yes that's what the satellite was for yes that's, that's, that's the spin- <laughs> it was spinning salad up there we just didn't yeah know that it. was it that was the point <laughs> we put a little bit of dressing and some yeah. you know some some iceberg lettuce and some other things in there and it was all good you know <laughs> what the Cold War was really about was that our planet was stealing all their lettuce and salad ingredients. And so they were trying to do revenge and, and take it back. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what that, uh, that, that chromite is. It's actually just, uh, yeah, maybe the chromite <laughs> is just a bunch of like croutons. <laughs> and, uh, or, 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 or it's a new salad dressing that we have yet to see from like Newman's own or anything, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah. What'd you think of this show too? I forgot to ask you that at the front. Uh, <laughs> it was, I kind of liked, I mean, it was, it was weird. I'm hoping that, like, because some, somebody uploaded, like, a lot of the episodes on YouTube, but, like, I don't think any of them have subtitles. Like, they're just the, yeah. the episodes. Because like, I started watching another that, one of it that had looked like it had better quality, and then I realized that it wasn't subtitled, so. Yeah, I that was what I did with AI. It said AI something, and then, yeah. like, yeah, me too, and I'm like, oh, damn it. Yeah. And so, unless you speak African, you're not going to, mm-hmm. you're not going to know what's going on. I, re- I really do want to take this and redub it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good idea. Because plus, too, there's, there's no copyright for this. So you, you can just do it. And Is there none? Like, do you think? I don't know. No, this is a lost media. It's it's um, it's um it's completely lost. Like, they don't, like, some of the episodes, like, they don't even have anymore. Because, like, the master tapes are gone. Or maybe just some random person has them. Yeah, but no, n- nobody, yeah. nobody owns the copyright to it, though. That's what I was wondering. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't. Because the company that made it like dissolved like a long time ago like probably near the end of this show and uh um, yeah i mean the show yeah, the show sure. for, for that we will give credit to the people it was created by linda du Plessis, developed by dirk de Vilers, um written by dr johan boyks oh, directed by definitely... gavin and directed by gavin Kies, kieser kaiser kieser k-e-y-s-e-r yeah. Yep. So just yep. wanted to give give the credit where credit is due. And originally aired on TV one in uh in uh South Africa. So yeah. <clears throat> that is so weird, man. Like I was just thinking about like South African like apartheid. Yeah. <clears throat> and how like if for like how it was like their nineteen eighties was like our nineteen fifty when it came to like stuff like that, which is like really bizarre when you think about it. It's like Oh, 1989, and they still have like segregation, <laughs> like you know, and um, it, it's just because like it's weirder because like film film quality got better, and so you're seeing stuff like in real time that like it looked like like you could actually see what was going on, like not like 1950s footage or whatever. Yeah, well, it's 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 kind of like what's going on in the Middle East right now. It's like seeing a, yeah. uh, it, it's like seeing the Holocaust in living color and. Yep you know 4k um yeah. it's it's insane like and it, yeah 8k actually and, and it's also like seeing and it also uh people have compared what the way that i mean before this even started the way that palestinians are treated by israelis is very similar to the way that african americans were treated during jim crow era in the united states so yeah you know history yeah. doesn't always repeat itself but it does rhyme I've said this before. Yep, yep. Oh boy. Sometimes but, it rhymes. Yep. And sadly, but we, 
sadly, a lot of people don't learn from it. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, is, is the longer, the longer you get away from an event that it becomes like less important and like people's like, for example, like the regular Holocaust, like, like that's like, I'm not trying to be mean, but mm-hmm. like after about a hundred years or so people are probably not going to be thinking about it as much as it's not going to be like in the forefront of everyone's minds. Cause I, I, we're almost at the point where, like, every Holocaust survivor is just gonna die. Like, no one left. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's like it was always interesting to put things into perspective. I mean, she's passed away now recently too, but I remember back when I was younger, people would always say because people that didn't live during the Holocaust, it would just seem like it was like basically it could have been the same as like you know the Revolutionary War. You know what I mean? It was like it could. It feels like it was that far away. To some people, but to think <clears throat> that, that Barbara Walters and Anne Frank were born the same year. Yeah, I know. Weird. See, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And you like, yeah. And like for me, even too, like I'm so I'm thinking, all right, so the Holocaust ended in 1946. That's 2030. So yeah. I was born, I was literally born just like 37 years after the Holocaust ended. Yeah. Like that's not a long time. Yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's like my dad, my dad was born the year after it ended. So it's just kind of weird. Yeah. It's just like, oh my God. But like, yeah, like after a while though, like people just kind of forget about it because like a whole bunch of generations have sprung up, which, you know, that's also a somewhat of a good thing though, in the case of the Holocaust, not, not good in the sense that people forget, but yeah. good in the sense that Zionists cannot keep on the ho- playing the Holocaust chord forever because at a certain point people are like, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I don't care. I'm no. just saying that's kind of how, you know, it happens. Like, but, but it does, you so. know, but it, it does, it is good to put it in perspective. The fact that it happened within a relatively recent time and yet we still don't learn from it and people are still bound to repeat things. It's just like, you know, you know, like women couldn't vote like just like a hundred years ago, you know? So it's like, right. It was really just like a short period. I know a lot of, a lot of things like, have changed, you know, and, and like a lot of things, you know, there's segregation and the civil rights movement was was sooner it was closer to us than the holocaust you know so it's just kind of weird yeah it is and plus two if, if south africa goes back to apartheid then they'll have to revamp this show again to do an anti-apartheid type of you know propaganda or whatever bring it back bring back interstate and, and, and and that's when we redub the whole thing we redub it as anti-apartheid propaganda yes and then we we send it to the internet as johnny lawrence is about to say in cobra kai <clears throat> and then um and then we me and you particularly two two of two people will then be responding apartheid 2.0 south africa and then after that we get to meet the wonderful cast members of bulletproof 2 which took place in south africa and that's yes. the end of our store end of our mm-hmm. lives end of our stories yep even though one of the uh people from bulletproof 2 that i reached out to re- you know declined <laughs> to do want to be interviewed on I the do show. Hear, so i do hear anyways, that bring that up as soon as i mentioned <laughs> <laughs> anyways any yep. other thoughts here about this uh about the show <laughs> No, not really. I okay. knew you were going to bring that guy up as soon as I mentioned it's it. It's okay. I'm, like, not, oh, I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, that was yeah. it. I'm not um, going to say who, just uh, for getting Sarah Marshall um, wait, waiting part two. Anyway. Um, yeah, no. no. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. No, um, yep. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Anyways, wow. um, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> Gave you something to think about. Yeah. Um, If you want us to create our own dubbed version of um, Interstir called uh, Bucks and Adam, we will do it. (laughs) Well, we're going to do we're going to do it no matter what, but you you won't see it unless you donate a little bit of a little bit of cheese, you know? Yeah. Go to our Patreon. Um, You know, you can find that at all too real com. Um, There's a link to our Patreon right there. And uh, if you join us, we've got different tiers on on uh, Patreon. I'm going to go through them really quick just so people know. You can join our podcast family. You can get early access to every episode of our show and thanked by our hosts in a future episode. And the hosts are me and Sesame. Yeah. Um, for $10 a month, you can pick a podcast episode topic. Um, also, uh, for 25 a month, you can become a podcast producer, which uh, you get the everything below that. You can produce with uh, Cullen Park a series of three episodes on a special topic of your choice for All Too Real 2 podcast, as well as the benefits at the lower levels. Um, and for 150 you can be in a movie for one of our upcoming productions. So join, <laughs> and for folks. And for, and for 500 Oh, go ahead, sorry. 
No, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say for $500 a month, Sesame, as in me, will just, like, go to your house and just be, like, stand around. You want me to, like, you basically just, like, like, basically a cardboard cutout, but it's, like, a real-life person. And I'll just be a statue if you want. I'll I mean, you, you, you will have to feed him, though. Oh, true. Yeah, that's true. I, I, basically, I'll be, like, a chef for, like, a baby. No, 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 I mean, I, no, I mean, they have to feed you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know why I thought, you know, never mind, yeah. I was yeah. going to say, like, I'll be your person. But don't, here, never mind. So $500 a month, you can pretty much do anything to me that's not sex. How about that? Or or <laughs> or, or physical violence. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so right now that tier is not available, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're interested in that, you can contact Sesame at... Um... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't have an email for Sesame, so <laughs> I have to, I'll have to make my own. You you can contact me, and I may or may not get that back to Sesame, depending on what you want to do with them. <laughs> yes, that's not sexual and or violent. So yes, uh, I, I I will I will filter it and decide if I think that you should hurt my friend or not. <laughs> <laughs> God, terrible. No, just joking. Anyways, um, so uh, and you can get a hold of me at Mike at CullenPark dot com. Um, but yeah, go go to all two real two dot com. You can check out our links to our uh, our, our uh, like social media links to all the episodes. Uh, go anywhere you can and give us a review. Cool thing that I uh, that that you can do right now. You can go on Spotify and you can actually comment below any episode. So if you're like, listening to this episode and you want to say something to us specifically about that episode comment below it on spotify mm-hmm. you can go to apple podcast and give us a five-star review as well um if you want to uh build a spaceship and go out into space and talk to the croutons and tell them to listen to the podcast that would be great too because <laughs> yeah. i want croutons to listen to me and um <laughs> just uh you know that'd be a good thing to do um share the show on your facebook pages and your tiktoks and your who's a what's it's and your Wiggle wobs and all the other uh and, and the and the the crow cons and the other uh <laughs> the 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 other uh social meads. Um but uh just yep. remember folks that uh until next time, I love you. Croutons are delicious. Yeah. Apartheid is bad. Yeah. Free Palestine, yeah. trans rights are human rights. And until yeah. next time, bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi, said, It is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth, and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer radio show on demand every day, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth.